Hi guys, you are watching our Cabichu, especially for young innovative minds. Sorry for the late uploading of video. Okay, I have already uh, uploaded this question paper in the Telegram channel our Cabichu channel YouTube. And hence from that you can download this and do it yourself and then come to the channel for the discussion or else you can go with me okay so the first question is this from physics semiconductors i have included four questions as it is a bit too long chapter and also it has lots and lots of concepts so there are more chances of questions to come from this chapter and so i i have included four conceptual questions so the first question is a semiconductor is formed by dashed bonds a semiconductor is formed by covalent bonds why it is due to the valency okay when a pure semiconductor is heated its resistance goes up down remains the same can't see that means they are asking for a semiconductor resistance is inversely or directly proportional to temperature and for a semiconductor it is directly proportional to uh, okay uh, for a semiconductor is it is inversely proportional to temperature and hence when heated as temperature increases resistance decreases as more the number of holes or electrons are formed okay so when heated resistance decreases so the answer will be goes down i have a question for you guys in case of metals what is the case is resistance is directly or inversely proportional to temperature not down your answer in the comment box and also say why is it so okay the next question is an n type semiconductor is positively charged negatively charged electrically neutral none of the above actually you will have a temptation to answer this questions uh, for negatively charged why because n type means there are more than more the number of electrons greater than number of holes and hence it will be negatively charged but remember the fact that n type semiconductor is electrically neutral okay and the next question is a p type semiconductor has acceptor density of 1020 sorry it's 10 to the power 20 atoms per meter cube and intrinsic concentration of 2.5 into 10 to the power 19 meter raised to minus 1 at 300 kelvin the electron concentration in this p type semiconductor is how to do this particular problem which is the acceptor here in p type semiconductor the acceptor means nh right so acceptor density is nh and we are also given intrinsic concentration concentration that means ni now in case of p type semiconductor we have the formula ne into n h is equal to n i the whole square right we know n i we know n h so we can easily find what is the value of n e and this will be first option okay now the next question is from chemistry and the question is the north pole of earth's magnet is in okay this is a very basic concept of magnetism and matter and here the north pole of earth's magnet will be a geographical south not a geographic geographical north okay it's geographical south now the next question is if two circular coils can be arranged in any of the three situations as shown in the figure 
then their mutual induction will be you do have many laws of uh, faraday's laws of mutual induction right so as more is the area of the loop which is allowed to move freely the more will be the mutual induction right so the more mutual induction will be in situation a okay so a is the correct option now the next question is what will be the entropy change delta s when an ideal gas undergoes a change in pressure from pi to pf pi to pf isothermally so this is a direct formula of the equation uh, direct question and yes I, why i included is that you should uh, brush up the formulas okay so here we can clearly say that first option is the correct one when an ideal gas undergoes a change from pressure pressure initial to pressure final isothermally it will be nr into ln pi by pf or we can also say that delta s will be minus nr ln pf by pi according to the laws of logarithm okay now the next question is this number of unpaired electrons in n2 plus e is it is a very easy questions i have a question from physics for you to do do remember that and this is your next question from chemistry part you can do it yourself the next question is this mx6 mx6 is a molecule with octahedral geometry how many x m x bonds are at 180 degree it's a question from chemical bonding and we do know what is the octahedral geometry right we can just construct it it for the visual easiness okay now this is the octahedral geometry right uh this all or dashed formula okay so we have one 180 degree here one over here and one over here and hence we have three m x m x bonds which will make 180 degree i will clearly show you one more time this is one this is the second thing okay okay and here we have the third one okay and we will connect like this it's the octahedral one we have one two and three okay now the next one is the compound essential for the process of photosynthesis has this element so this is mg okay and it's in chlorophyll now the next one is from max the probability that a plant will live in 3 by 4 and probability that another plant lives in is 1 by 3 the probability that only one of them leaves is okay let's see if this is an independent or dependent event how can we check that just have a common logic one plant is uh, you know leaving okay one jasmine plant is there and one rose plant is there and they are leaving can you just say if the rose plants uh, growth will depend on the jasmine plant never ever right so they are their growth and their lives are independent events 
so we can take this also as an independent event and hence p of a will be p of first plant will be 3 by 4 and p of second plant will be 1 by 3 and we need to pi uh, find out the probability that one of them only one of them leaves is so how to find the probability that means we need to find out p of a delta b that is symmetrical difference of the living probability of first plant and living probability of second plant this will be what p of a minus p of a intersection b plus p of b minus p of a intersection b you can check this p of a is 3 by 4 p of b is 1 by 3 p of a intersection b will be p of a into p of b okay so we can find this answer as 3 by 4 minus 3 by 4 into 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 okay 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 right so we will get 3 by 4 plus 1 by 3 minus 2 by 4 and you can calculate it and reach to your answer I am not giving okay and the next question is also a workout for you I think it's a very easy question if you know the formula of eccentricity the relation between B and A for an ellipse and the equation of a directrix you can definitely reach to an answer in a very simple way and the answer will be 3x um, 3x squared plus 4x squared is equal to 12 okay so this will be the answer and the next question is this n of u is equal to 700 n of a is equal to 200 n of b is equal to 300 n of a intersection b is this and then what is n of a complement intersection b complement and this is also a very basic question from set theory you know that a complement intersection b complement will be a union b the all complement and this is d morgan's law right so we can apply the same here we know n of a intersection b n of a and n of b and hence we can reach to the answer of n of a union b and when you find n of a union b you can easily find this as it will be 1 minus n of a union b okay and the next question is also from uh, probability in a city 20 percentage of the population okay it's from set theory itself 20 percent of them in car 50 percent in bus and 10 percent both car and bus then the persons traveling by car or bus okay it's a very easy question if the whole of the population is taken as one the percentages will be as it is 20 50 10 and all okay so we need to find p of c union b and this will be simply p of c plus not p uh, okay it will be n of c okay n of c that is 20 plus n of b that is 10 minus uh, that is 50 uh, minus n of a uh, c intersection b that will be 10 and what will be the answer 20 plus 50 minus 10 and that is 60 percent okay now part a question this was the question which one 
came out with a doubt and it was a very relevant doubt okay actually this image has got seven hidden faces okay do check once more you can zoom it from the pdf downloaded at the telegram group okay the next question is this how many animals and faces do you find let's see okay now let's do it one is over here and the other is over here you can see a peacock and all and you can see a bird here you can see a polar bear here you can see a man here you can see a face here you can see a monkey overlooking the mountain here you can see over here a bird beak here one animal here one one thing here we have a face and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and here also you have a bird twelve and here you can again see one and yes here also you can see and again anything can you find yes here there is a human's face now we have got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen there are 17 of them okay so where are the others let's see yes there is one here and one over here so that will make you 17 okay there are 17 faces or animals in this figure and you can detail it by looking the telegram group now the next one is a most requested question uh, from matchstick but here I have used pencils. So move three pencils to make three squares. How can we do that? So in any question from matchstick you need to figure out which will be the most effective matchstick to be moved. So actually we need to make three squares and this three squares will not be will sh should not be like this apart okay or like this two of them united and one apart it should be a whole one image so how to do that one is here right i am taking this one and moving it over here and this will make this and I'm taking this one and moving out here again and this will make this and the next one will be I'm not moving the this square okay and yes we need to move one more square one more match uh, one more pencil and that will be this so i will take it here so what i made is three squares how this i kept as it is this also i kept as it is i moved this to here and i moved these two to here okay and hence i made three squares which are not apart from each other which will get united to form this thing and you should not cut you should not break any of these pencils okay you should think 
I think you should make a rough sketch of what you are doing in the rough sheet. Okay. And the next one is another problem. And again, I, I, I have not used matchstick, but I used pins. And you have to move three pins in order to make five triangles. How to do this? Think, sketch and try. Okay, so what I did is, I took this one and I made it here and then I took this one to make here and I took this one to make here and now we have a thing like that and this is a very familiar thing uh, in the counting of triangles and all right so actually in some questions you can uh, get to that no uh, that knowledge of previous questions which we used to count triangles or count squares do imagine uh, what are the chances of making three triangles or five triangles out of some lines and make it possible in what you have given in the question okay what you are given in the question so i made like this we have one two three four and fifth triangle like this okay and the next last question will be this optical illusion developed at mit in which an image can be interpreted in one of two one or two different ways depending on viewing distance actually we can see uh, two images from this as we move apart we will feel like a lady and if we move close to the image you will feel like einstein and what is this illusion called this illusion is known as hybrid image okay and that's all with our part so do subscribe to the channel to get one more mock test before the exam and also do comment and share with your friends if you really feel this interesting and informative thank you